Hey guys, it's The Real Deal. Welcome back to the channel. Guys, today we're going to be looking at your call and he is an absolute beast. Um, I slept on this guy for a long time. Don't make the same mistake I did. Um, he is an amazing champion. Great in arena. He brings control. He brings damage. And he's also great in dungeons and Doom Tower as well. So before we sort of go through his gear and the build, let's like hop into dungeons so let's do like a quick finite run and then we'll do some arena so we're going to do hard mode stage six i won't do the full run because i've done a video on this i'll drop it in the comments below but just so you guys can see the sort of damage that he does and i'll just sort of slow it down when he's coming into play but yeah he hits so hard and i was not expecting it at all so here comes your call and that is like sort of 50k across the board plus freezes. And it is stage six on hard mode, which is obviously these these waves are so much tougher than normal. But like there, 162k single hit on his A2. A1, not as hard, around sort of 44k. But this guy can slam. And yeah, I mean, he has really, really impressed me. And he was one of the key components that I needed for Fire Knight. Outside Fire Knight, you could definitely use him in Dragon. Probably Spider on Normal, just for control on the Spiderlings, if you want to use like a freeze and burn tactic. Um, and then Ice Golem, he'd be pretty solid. He wouldn't be like my first choice. But I feel like early to mid game, he would definitely carry you on every single floor. In Doom Tower as well, like other PvE content he excels in. Um, with Doom Tower, he would help you so much in the waves, even on hard mode. Um, I reckon he would probably be out usable all the way up to like floor 100. Um, if you bring a lot of CC champions and him, you know, the enemies are going to be constantly locked out while he's bringing in some big damage to help you get through the waves. Uh, so, yeah, like I said, let's uh, cut this short. Let's move on to some arena. So, we're currently in uh, gold two for Tag Arena. Found a spicy team here, and I'm going to show you guys some nice little combos that you can use with your cull to wreck teams like this. All right, here we go, boys. So we're going to lead with Hedgy. I hopefully there we go. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. So we need to keep Warlord um, locked out. Well, not locked out. And oh, damn, my team's too fast. Okay, so I'm just going to forfeit one go. Let's just hit Lydia. Nice bit of damage there. And then we're just going to weaken all the enemies. And you can see, so what's great about his team is we've got Galish and Warlord goes to lock us out. And we've just frozen him. And hopefully we should have all our skills up. And then what we're going to do, push back Lydia's turn meter. And Galish pairs up really nicely with Yakul. So even when they all come off their skills, we can put block debuffs on ourselves and freeze the enemy. And it just makes it super easy, but such a nice combo. So if you can ever bring in a freeze champion that does AoE with Yako, he can, you know, he can use his A3 to open, or you can save it and use it on the next turn. And that's two turns of locking them out. And then you just do some insane damage with his A2. I mean, the guy just slams, but uh, let's check him out against a Leores team if I can find one. So this is my other favorite combo with Yakal, and that's bringing in Basha. Obviously, the upgrades to him would be Warlord and Yumiko, who are a thousand times better, but he still does a pretty good job here. So he's going to put um, some skills and cooldown. And then what we can do is Leores, you know, one of the best nukers in the game. We have put his A2 on lockdown. And then we can actually freeze him with Yakul's A3. This is like a proper end game strategy. Loads of people have used this against me in the past uh, in Live Arena. And it is, it is a solid strategy and it's a really annoying one to deal with. Uh oh, we're in trouble, guys. Oh, yeah, but the skills are on cooldown. It doesn't matter. Okay, so what we're going to do is let's take out Leores first. 
And then we are going to sort of just pick the rest of the team off one by one. I had to bring in a second nuker. That is one of the things I'd say about Yakozi. Yeah, he does hit hard. He is a good nuker. But he, if you're going against like top end game teams, he's more, in my opinion, a like a backup nuker because he's bringing, he does bring a damage, but he brings also a lot of CC as well. And because of that, he's not, you know, he's not hitting as hard as like a, as a Leores or Hetfrek or, or Gorgrid or Taras, any of those top level nukers. He's not on the same level, but he is bringing so much to the table. Uh, and we should, we should still win this fight quite comfortably. Just waiting for uh, Leores to get freed and then we can wrap around back to him. And he'll just like finish them off by one by one. Got to prioritize uh, Pythion first as he can revive and keep the fight going. See you later, buddy. And then the next annoying champion would be Emic. And I think we've, yep, and we managed to get a freeze on him, which is great. And we're just going to focus him down, try and kill him as quick as we can. Come on, Leo. But yeah, but it's just like a really nice strategy. It's one that I really like because it's it's quite creative, a little bit, little bit out of the box thinking. And like I said, a lot of people have used this against me in live arena uh, when I use my Leores. And it is such a good little strategy that you can use. So um, yeah, let's uh, let's uh, check out his gear and masteries. So this is my yeah, Carl's build, and he's in lethal and perception. So again, plus uh, ten crit rate. 25% ignore defense and then a bit of accuracy and speed with perception. So I'm going to go through every single piece of gear. He is built very specifically for finite um, and mine's really, really fast. Yours can definitely be slower, uh, but we've got um, substats we're looking for are speed and crit rate and crit damage and attack percentage if you can and accuracy as well. Uh, really, really nice crit damage gloves with double rolls in crit rate and speed as well. Tax percentage on the chest, again, speed and crit rate. And then speed boots. I mean, if you're purely using him for arena, you could swap these out for um, attack percentage boots. Then we've got attack on the ring, crit damage on the amulet with a sub roll in accuracy. And then we've got an accuracy banner. I do feel like you do need an accuracy banner. Otherwise, you're not going to land those freezes and you're not going to get the full benefit of his kit. So he's got 35k HP, 4.7k attack, 272 speed. I told you, he is fast. Um, you could definitely drop this down for arena. I'd say like 220 to sort of 250 would be perfectly fine. Uh, crit capped and then 242 crit damage and then 287 accuracy. Um, if I just show you, if I put him on for finite, we're well within the range that we need to land our debuffs for finite. Um, skills, so he's got a really nice passive, um, increases the damage his champion inflicts by 10% for each champion in the battle under freeze debuff. Um, so this is great for arena, of course, if we open up with the A3, a few of those champions is should land uh, freeze on, so that means we're going to do more damage. And it also decreases the damage this champion receives by 10% for champions under freeze debuff. So that means we've got a bit of survivability as well. And if we kill anyone when they're under freeze, we get unkillable as well. So A3 attacks all enemies, has a 75% chance of placing freeze debuff for one turn. This chance increases to 100% chance against targets with 75% or more turn meter. This debuff cannot be resisted by targets with 75 or more turn meter. So if the enemy has um, a slightly slower than us, um, you know, hopefully we should be able to land those freezes on them and they shouldn't be able to resist them. So A2 attacks one enemy, has a 75% chance of placing um, the big boy version of a decrease speed for three turns and has a well, actually, sorry, it's 100% for both when fully booked. Uh, chance of placing freeze. Also steals 100% of the target's turn meter and places a 30% um, increased speed buff on this champion for three turns. Will ignore 
50% of the target's defense if they are under freeze debuff. His A2 just slams, and with that 50% ignore defense, with Savage, you know, you should be able to take out most people. Uh, A1 attacks one enemy two times. Each hit has 40% chance, um, books up to 50% chance of placing freeze, and will ignore 25% of the target's defense if they're under freeze. So you can see he's all about the freeze, and if they've got freeze on them, we're going to do more damage. So that's why I like to pair him up with Glisha. So she ideally goes first. She's faster and will freeze first. He can like just, you know, drop some of his A2. The freezes come off and then we cycle back around and freeze everyone again with A3. So these masteries are very specific for Fire Knight. Um, if you're not using him for, if you want to purely use him for arena, bring in Helm Smasher. But I'd say these masteries are better all round. So one of the reasons we want to take Fearsome Presence is that will increase the chance for us to land freezes. Again, that's great for arena, but it's more for Fire Knight Hard because having that extra 5% means we can push the turn meter back on Fire Knight Hard. So we've taken Blast Proof. That's going to reduce AoE damage on us. Uh, Resurgent. Just one of the best uh, masteries in the game. So if we take a big hit, we can remove a debuff from this champion. So say they put some CC on us, like a freeze, like a stun, we'll be have a good chance for removing it. Uh, because we throw out freezes, I've chosen Harvest to Spare, so we can throw out a leech, so we can heal ourselves up in PVE and Arena. Uh, Cycle Revenge and Retribution. So Cycle Revenge... If we take a big hit, we're going to increase our, well, a very good chance of increasing our turn meter. Uh, Retribution, if someone um, hits us again and we lose a certain amount of HP, we have a 50% chance of counterattack. And then we've obviously, you have to go offense because he is a damage champion. Extra crit rate, extra crit damage for damage. So I've taken Whirlwind of Death. So this is one, again, this is good for Arena. So if we do kill someone and we will kill someone, you know, we're going to speed up, we'll get more turns, we can cycle around, but it's also good for Fire Knight as well. Uh, cycle Revenge, just in case we do do extra amount of damage, we can reduce our cooldowns. Uh, Heart of Glory, this again is more for Fire Knight, so if we do have full HP, we're going to do more damage. Uh, single Out, so if a target has more, like, sorry, less than 40% HP, we're going to be doing more damage. Bring it down. So because we've only got 35k HP, most people should have more HP than us. So we're going to do more damage. And then kill streak, because we are going to be killing people, it's going to increase our damage. So that's pretty much the end of the video, guys. And you're cool. You know, I cannot show enough love for this guy. Everyone can get him from the clan shop. He is definitely worth getting. And you know, like I said. Doom Tower, Fire Knight, it, like, even if you wanted to use him in like, just normal dungeons like Dragon and stuff, and Spider, he will be able to carry you. Great, great champion. Don't sleep on him. Um, but yeah, please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe, and I'll see you all in a video soon. Peace.